of the Reno County Ch Commission to order for the Tuesday, December 1st, 2020 meeting. Uh, today we will have the uh, co Chairman Sellers and the County Administrator Randy Partington on Zoom here and uh, shortly. So let's call a order with the Pledge of Allegiance to the American flag and a prayer by uh, Rep. Pastor Tim Kraft from the First Church of God. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, and justice for all. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for another day. Thank you for always being with us, no matter what. Thank you for this great country, this great nation. Truly, we are a blessed people. I know that the COVID situation has rocked our boat, but we also know it has not rocked you. The Bible tells us that the world is firmly established. It cannot be moved. So you've got it. But in these difficult times, we realize our need and our dependence upon you. And Father, for this awesome group of commissioners that lead us, I ask you to give them your direction and wisdom. Please guide them and lead them in your truth because we don't know the outcomes and you do. So Lord, be our light and our guide. You are God, our Savior, and our hope is in you all day long. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Tim. Appreciate that very much. Ron, thank you. Bye-bye. <clears throat> uh, next on the agenda is the welcome and announcements by Commission Chair. Uh, are you on the line? We got a little technical situation here. Bear with us out there. <coughs> it was working great a minute ago. Until it wasn't. Outside of my picture up there. It's working great till it wasn't. want to get Randy on the phone if we can't get this up. Okay. Can you gentlemen hear him? He's on now. Daniel, well, you can use some expertise. I'll try. I'm wondering if the cable comes. Yeah, it looks like the internet's not working. Is it hardwired in or is it? I believe so. Daniel, the entire reputation of I did not yeah, wrestle right. this very fast. <laughs>
Sorry, man. Is this normal? It was connected to that. Is it normally that? Or that? We see. We can see you now. Are you back on the air? Yes. Okay. Uh, Chairman Sellers, do you have any remarks you'd like to give this morning? No. The meeting's turned over to you since you're there in person. Thank you, Ron, for conducting the meeting. Okay. Uh, turn this over to uh, our county administrator, Randy Partington, for an introduction. Okay, thank you. I, I would like to introduce our new um, Reno County Health Director, Carla Nichols. She's there in the audience and she wants to go up to the podium and make a comment, but I want to let you know that she has over 20 years experience leading medical facilities. Um, 18 of those years were at Bob Wilson Memorial Hospital Administrator. She also has two years a practice administrator at the Kansas Joint Science Specialist. Carla has a master's degree of health services administration from the University of Kansas and she began working for Reno County yesterday morning. So I'd like to introduce Carla. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning. commissioners. Good morning. <coughs> Thank you for allowing me to be here. Let's go ahead and Tell us anything you want to tell us, and we appreciate you being here and on, on duty. Thank you. Thank you. So during my orientation period, you will continue to receive updates from Megan and Karen, and at, at some point we will transition that communication over to myself. So I just wanted to let you know that. So thank you very much. Okay. And uh, where do you live at? I know you live in Reno County. Reno so. County, near Pretty Prairie. So grew up in Colwich, went to Andal High School, um, did a... a, a various things but yes currently living back in this area and living near Pretty Prairie All right. so thank you welcome thank you thank you uh, very much appreciate you coming okay. and, thank you. and uh, being introduced to everyone this morning and we look forward to working with you thank you very much thank you uh, at this time we have public comments for items not on the agenda is there someone out there? John is going to ask.
introduce yourself and uh, where you live, and uh, you have uh, five minutes. Okay. Thank you, and good morning, Brock Wells, 212 West Avenue B, Hutchinson, Kansas. Um, today, I just want to um, ask a couple questions of the of, of the commission and, and the board, um, and report report some numbers. Um, you know, on July 14th, uh, when the when the mask mandate went into effect, uh, we're going to keep hammering this. Uh, 35 active cases, and as of November 30th, uh, last night. On the dashboard, we had uh, 1,290, so that is an uh, increase of 3,585% in active cases. Um, multiple sources um, show that Americans are wearing masks, about roughly about 85%, and Kansans are doing even better than that. Uh, you say anywhere between 90 and 95%. Um, you know, we've had outbreaks in prisons, nursing homes, schools, businesses, um, and, 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 uh, and other places, um, you know, all wearing masks and, and or PPP um, um, protective equipment. So my question is, you know, do we have, you know, how, have we have any data to show that the current policies, the COVID policies, are stopping the spread of the virus? And then two, I mean, do we do we have any information on how the mass testing has helped uh, stop the spread or slow the spread? And then um, would you know we've been doing the quarantining long enough? So how has the quarantine of asymptomatic people helped? Um, you know, especially with with the um, uh, you know if if everyone's wearing masks, how how's it how's the quarantine of asymptomatic people helping? And then, you know, um, yeah. So, I mean, with all these policies, there have been collateral damage. And, of course, economic-wise, we're not going to know for, for probably a year or two. But have, have we have, – do we really, you know, have we shown that these policies that we're doing are making a difference? Well, I can tell you one thing that I know of a school district that has almost 15,000 students, teachers, and staff, that the last count I had, and I believe I mentioned this before, they had 31 cases. They all wear masks. The people around them wear masks. The whole community is, is masked. Now, I can't speak for anything else but what I, uh, I know of. And so this is, a, this is a case where I'm sure that we can get some information back to you. Commissioner Stephan? Well, and I, I, no, and I appreciate I appreciate that, and there's good anecdotal evidence like that out there. Um, but you know, like Mennonite Friendship Manor, they they had um, they got a big thumbs up from uh, centers uh, met, or uh, CMS, excuse me, about um, you know doing everything that they asked them to, and then they had they had that COVID break. I don't remember how many, you know, they had 40 to 60 uh, cases out there, something like that between. Uh, residents and staff and, and, and they you know and you know thank the lord that there wasn't uh any more deaths than there were out there but you know that's there are anecdotal evidences like that both ways so i mean that's so i i, I mean I, I appreciate that i just you know this, this this policy has introduced you know these policies introduce fear too Okay, what's your answer? Hit, hit us with the, those numbers again. On in July, we had thirty-five cases. Thirty-five active cases. When when they started the campaign to mask people, and then most recently is what thirteen hundred cases. Yeah. Yeah, and that's not unique to, to Reno County. We've right. seen that all over the state. You know, and 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 in fact, when you look at the true numbers on the of the counties that do have a mask mandate. <clears throat> you see a far higher increase in 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 cases per hundred thousand versus the counties that don't have a mask mandate. The virus is complicated. Uh, our approach to it, it, you know, the only real ramifications we know are to the, to the detriment of our economy, to the detriment of our school kids, to the detriment of of, uh, of drug abuse and and domestic violence. That we know. You know, we cannot quantify. 
the improvements that we've made in controlling the disease. We, we haven't controlled the disease, it's controlled us. You know, I think the, the, the fortunate aspect of that is when you, when you start to look at the statewide numbers now, you, you do clearly see that the case numbers are plateauing. And, and the death rate has, has, has dropped uh, considerably, and it has been for, for a month and a half or so. I, I had that written down. Uh, the the Nover November 28 deaths in the state, as recorded on the on the KDHC website, was two, and it's you go clear back to September the 15th and July the 14th to match those numbers, and it really the 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 death rate really plateaued back in late September, you know, and even the daily new new cases when you look at this on the KDHC HE website, you can see <coughs> that uh, it, it really kind of peaked back on November the 10th. And, and we need to keep those, those dates in mind because we've, we, we, we got aggressive and, and or we, there was aggressive moves made and, and health orders passed that post-date the, 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 the start of the plateau. And we do need to be able to, 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 to put these, this data, these, these mandates on our data to kind of try to extract information on whether they were effective or not. And, you know, my interpretation as a, as a physician and, a, and a, with a bachelor's degree in chemistry and biology is that, uh, yeah, no, they don't correlate at all. So, it, you know, it's tough. Again, I'd love a little dose of humility on the part of the government, on, on the part of the, of the Laura Kelly administration and some admission of that they're struggling with it. People like the truth. It's the, you know, that's, that's my mandate. You know, right now we're reading the, the book of Psalms and it talks over and over about the truth, the truth. And, and somehow the truth has escaped us recently in our handling of this virus. And that's unfortunate because that, that just leads to poor governance and, and, and 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 that'll be, that's haunting us uh, from a collateral damage standpoint, and and it's just very unfortunate that this herd think is is being propagated, and is right now it's being propagated by one and uh, one and a half million dollars of your taxpayer money by the Laura Kelly administration. I think it, it, I think realistically that we passed a health order, 20-04, and that we're going to relook at that and uh, on December 15th. And so I think that's where we're at and uh, that's what the commission has decided. And so uh, uh, look forward to, to seeing some more data and results and, and, and more knowledge. I think we're gaining knowledge every day from things. And so uh, that's what I would suggest is, is that we continue to, to look at that December 15th and, and uh, look at the information that we have at that time. And I thank you very much. Yeah. I, I did just sorry real quick you did ask what what you know what um, would I do there is the the great Barrington decoration out there written by epidemiologists and and, and people that uh, are infectious disease experts from uh, Harvard Oxford and um, Stanford I believe and um, co-signed by another 42 doctors 42, and, and, yeah another 42,000 and that is it's called focus protection and it looks at the virus we have enough data on that to show takes advantage of the weakness of the virus and the focus protection um, you know it, it is letting people go about their business that are not at, 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 at um, you know that are not at great risk for the side effects and then the people or the uh, complications and deaths and the people that that are there are therapies out there that they could employ um, you know I'm not going to speak of any uh, medications as a, as a chiropractor but you know we got vitamin D vitamin C zinc those those three are, are super easy there's a ton of research on vi high dose vitamin C killing viruses and and those types of things is what we can do I mean the average or the median age of death in Kansas is 80 years old that's life expectancy so we need to get back back to business and and you know that's that I think is what um, you know and we do have there have been other countries that have done that that we could compare okay just, well thank you so, very much right. thank Appreciate you Thanks, bro. Commissioner Sellers any comments yes uh, I'd like to uh, reply uh, the two of you have made some comments I'd like to reply to uh, Mr. Wells uh, 
and my reply is based on Senator Moran's recent comments that he put into his newsletter recently. He says, last week he toured Stormont Vale Health Center in Topeka, and these comments were made after that, and I think it sums up my present thoughts on the subject. Senator Moran, our hospitals are working hard to meet the needs of our communities, but they need each of us to take personal responsibility to stop the spread of COVID-19. I want to encourage all Kansans to take precautions to keep you and your families safe, including wearing a mask, practicing social distancing, and frequently washing your hands. I think I'll let Senator Moran's words speak for themselves. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anybody else out there? Okay. No other public comments. Next, we come to the determined additions or revisions to the agenda. I would like to put item 10, the executive session. I'd like for consideration of this to move it to December 15th when we all have an opportunity to back here in person to discuss that. I would like to add business items to item B to insert the District 9 fire truck contract with Hayes Fire and also to add to the consent agenda the CARES Act new disbursements to the consent agenda with $43,236.43. Okay. Mr. Hurst, did you add the fire truck purchase contract to the consent agenda or to the regular agenda? To item B of the regular agenda, business items. Okay. Is that satisfactory with you? Of course. I would second those in the agenda. Okay. Any further discussion on those, on that motion to accept the revisions and additions to the agenda? If not, roll call, please. Well, now that we're in the additions, you know, I would like to talk about the vaccine distribution a bit today. And I'd like to add that to the agenda. Is there a, okay, is that under more or less the reports and items? There's not necessarily a motion required on that. Is that, would that be? Wherever you think it fits best. Yeah, we can do that in the commission reports. Okay. Is that all satisfactory with you? Works for me. Okay. All right. Any other discussion? Roll call, please. Yes. 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 All right. Motion passed. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Motion approved. Now we'll go to the consent agenda. Or is there any other additions? A little late, isn't it? I think we covered most of this early on anyway. We'll go to the consent agenda with vouchers totaling $734,881.21 and the CARES Act disbursement of $43,236.43. Consider a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented by staff. If not, I will move to approve the consent agenda. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Commissioner Hurst? Yes. Commissioner Stephan? Yes. Commissioner Stoller? Commissioner Stoller? Yes. Okay. Time lapse. Time lapse, isn't it? Okay. Business items. Item A is the tower lease agreement with Idea Tech for the placement of wireless equipment on the Water District Number 8 tower in the Highlands. And early on, if I may, just sure. before we get to you, if, that, if that's okay. Uh, a couple meetings ago, uh, we asked uh, Don Britton, uh, Public Works Director, 
to uh, inquire with Highlands uh, if they had any interest in taking over the tower. And so I'd just like to have a comment by Don and see if he's heard anything back from them. See if Don available, he's, he's coming. It's um, quite the delay. Don, would you like to come up and uh, report on your uh, conversations with Highland regarding uh, their interest in taking over the water tower? Okay. Don Britton, Director of Reno County Public Works. Uh, I, I had a, it was important to me to get out to the members of the Highlands to see, I think, whether they was in favor of this or not, even though the county takes care of the tower and the water system, it's within their town. I contacted the mayor this morning and uh, I asked her if they, they had discussed this, whether they wanted this or not, wanted this opportunity on their tower or not. And uh, she indicated that they had stayed out of it and they was planning on me to represent them. And I, and I said, well, to represent you, I need to know what you desire. And she said she talked to the other city commissioners and they'd come to a conclusion, an agreement, that they was not for it and I asked them why they was not for it. And she said because they didn't want to be in direct conflict with the only business that they had within the Highlands. And that is the uh, tower that's already uh, erected southwest of their city for the Highlands, owned by Crazy Horse Communications, which is owned by the person that owns the golf course that the, the Highlands is built around. So that's what she told me this morning. Now, I don't know if they went out amongst the community and found out what they wanted, but that's the consensus of the city council. So I just thought I'd need to let you know that. Okay. Thank so, you for the information. Go ahead. That sounds to me like they're more, <clears throat> they base that decision on the potentially having the idea tech antenna on the water tower. Is that right? Well, there's already a tower constructed for uh, internet services for the Highlands, yeah. and that tower is owned by the owner of the golf right, course of right, the Highlands. Right, but but we're talking about turning over the water tower and the whole, the, the water supply, right? No. No, no. No, 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 no. I no. Okay. We're not turning over the water supply to the Highlands right now, and, and and I haven't pursued that much because they're not ready for that yet. That should happen years down the road. It should happen someday. The city should have their their water and sewer system, but right now that is not the case, and not going to happen soon. This is only about erecting the towers on the water tower within the Highlands, and that's completely controlled and operated by the. Uh, commission by yeah. the Reno County. So why are we asking them about the, putting an antenna up on there? I think it's, I I think it's courtesy to ask the people within the Highlands if they want that system on a tower that's actually within their city that they're going to have someday. I think that's just a courtesy to ask them that. Hmm. Okay. Any other questions? Commissioner Sellers, do you have any questions or at this time? Well, um, I read uh, the information in the packet and I guess I'd like to start the discussion of the commission on this item. Uh, I, I, I'm in agreement uh, to proceed with the contract other than I still think the contract lacks the uh, idea tech providing us with uh, an okay from a licensed structural engineer. Uh, 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 consideration of this, I, I did see the letter from uh, idea tech employee saying that he had the uh, ability to do this, but I don't think that it's his decision to make. I, I, I'm in favor of the contract as presented in our agenda and packet that was given to us if we would include the fact that they have to have the approval of the licensed structural engineer before it occurs. Okay. As, 
as we go forward with this, maybe now's the time, if there's no more questions with Don, uh, we ask uh, Idea Tech representatives to come up and, and visit. Thank you again. My name is Ethan Kaplan, uh, General Counsel. Uh, what uh, the structural engineering question, that is possible. The, the issue is, like we were saying last time, is we're on such a, a deadline because of the CARES Act um, and needing to get this installed. So getting some sort of uh, engineering report or study uh, done by, uh, I'd say it'd take 30 to 60 days and we just don't have that time, we're fine with doing it. Problem is it's gonna have to be post installation. Um, as we've said last time, and I think, I think Commissioner Hurst, you'd, you'd mentioned, this isn't a lot of weight as, as was thought. It's, it's really a, a small amount and as Mr. Yoder, uh, fixed wireless manager, he's been doing this for many years, uh, never had an issue. Um, we, we are giving, we have basically taken last week's comments. Um, we spoke with uh, your counsel, we spoke with Mr. Partington, and we have tried to reduce this to make you extremely comfortable, given the short deadline. One of those being making it just a year, um, basically giving the, the commission an opportunity to, to review this um, and really just get us over this this hump right now. And, and if I may, before we kind of dive into that, just to talk about the Highlands, and, and Commissioner Stephan, I appreciate your, your comment about why are we asking the Highlands. Well, just to reiterate, this is about the surrounding area. This is, this is because this has to do with the CARES Act, it has to be unserved people. And so we're talking about the 81 premises outside uh, in, that, in that radius. So we understand that they have access right now through Crazy Horse Communications. Um, as I mentioned last time, we have not heard from them. Um, I don't, I am unaware of any sort of access to these 81 people. Um, my understanding is there is not, and that's who we are going to be trying to reach. So, um, you know, they do not have to purchase Idea Tech or do anything like that uh, through the Highlands. It, it'd be, you know, even those 81 people don't have to. Um, it's just a matter of providing that resource especially during this time. Now, will you run cable, broadband cable to that site? I do not know about the future plans as far as running fiber to there. No, there I mean just to get it to the water tower. Correct, yes. Do you have the proper permission and so forth that it takes to, uh, within that city, within the county, to run that uh, cable in the proper location? And again, that is something that will have to be determined once we get an approval. I don't think we've gone, gotten to the point where we can determine that. Um, my guess is, and I guess, I, I hate to guess, but to yes, we would be able to get it there, um, especially if we're approved. But obviously the proper permits and everything would be uh, ascertained after we knew that was, it was a, an option. I have several just specific points in the contract sure. that I think need to be addressed. Uh, let's start with page two uh, at the top. I, I would change the uh, that second sentence from 24 hours to, to do two business days. Okay. Those guys aren't going to move that quick. <laughs> and that'd be more re realistic for everybody. And then in... in 11A, uh, the, the lease will terminate immediately without penalty and with no rent payment due. I would drop the or. I, I think there, there does need to be an upfront payment for, for time and energy expended. And, 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 and so I, I would change that a little bit. I'd drop the or. In uh, 13, 13B, uh, oh, two thirds of the way down, it says leasee hereby assumes all risk of damage to property. That's a pretty big assumption. Is there? Do we have any 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 way that that's guaranteed? Because you know, something something happens that that tower's got to be worth several million bucks. Right. Well, we have we'll have the insurance, obviously, um, up above. There's the, the million dollar per occurrence. That's my ability, I believe. Right. Well, I mean, if there is damage, I mean, I guess the question is if you're wanting some sort of, like, 
bond or something to that effect where, where you'd be protected? I'm sure that'd be possible. Does it cause pertain to the, to the tower or does it pertain to the equipment you're hanging on it? Well, it's in or about the leased premises. I, it sounds to me like it, it pertains to the to the well, it's tower a, or to the water tower. Damage to the property so or sure the my guess, and we can make that more clear. Is to our property, the actual equipment. Right. Um, so we would take that risk. So if something happens to our equipment um, and and our property that we put on there, you would not be liable. Um, I think I think if uh, if if the lessee damaged the the tower equipment uh, and tore it, it'd be responsible for that. Right. I carry insurance for that. We carry insurance for that. So I think as a matter of law, whether it says that you indemnify us for that or not, I think it ex I think it already exists. Right. So uh, and uh, from what I understand about the equipment you're going to install there and the limited physical intrusion into the tower itself. Uh, and I'm talking about mounting equipment on the guardrail, which, uh, and you're talking about running, uh, cable was the word, running a, a electrical conduit down through the box at the bottom, and, and, and that's going to be fixed to the inside. Um, I think probably the, the risk to the tower itself is, is a minimum. That's, that's my understanding as well. Yes. Well, then I would recommend you put it in writing in the contract. What, what do you want in writing? That that they are they assume responsibility for damage to the structure. I would feel better if it was stated within the contract. Let's go to to page four, number twenty three, uh, the binding terms. I would add that, that this could be assigned by the leasee with approval by the commission. <clears throat> and then on exhibit A, <clears throat> you know, again, I, I, I think this, this joint venture between a private and a, and a government entity is a, is a great thing, a wonderful thing. And I, I also think that the gov government side of it needs good uh, good representation in the in the in the negotiation aspect of it, and that's the role I'm trying to serve here. And when I look at what, what some of the dollar values involved and the time ex ex expended and the and, and the, the potential risk that, that that the government incurs, I think this needs to be a, a one-time upfront payment, not an, even an installation payment, but an upfront payment of $5,000 upon signing the contract. And then I think it needs to be <clears throat> $500 a month because, you know, you, a guy can pretty well sort through you know, what your, what your, your monthly income is going to be on this. And I do think it needs to be shared. And I, I, I know the taxpayers of Reno County would be thrilled to, to participate from that standpoint. I do think $500 a month is is very fair to both parties. And then on, on number two, on exhibit A number two, explain to me the, the parties agree to reconvene to discuss and negotiate any extension of the lease prior to 90 days before the term expires. What, what's, the inti what's the thought process there? So it takes time to actually get up there and remove, if we don't come to an agreement, it'll take time to actually get up there and remove the equipment and notify the customers that they're no longer gonna have access because there was not an agreement reached. That's the 90 days. So because it's such a limited amount of time, I mean, typically if we were doing a five-year lease, um, in, in a lot of them, we allow for one, 180 days, sometimes <coughs> it's more. Uh, just to be able to get up there, notify customers so that they're not all of a sudden one day deciding, you know, we meet, let's say we meet a day before the contract's up. Well, now we have some issues because we haven't come to an agreement and, and those people are in limbo. And, and, and lastly, I, I do think some sort of structural assessment would be awfully nice. So it's not weight, it's, it's wind resistance that's probably the bigger issue. And, and that one's, uh, hopefully that's something that we can overcome. But yeah, again, I think it's, it's, a, it's a great opportunity for both parties. And you know, I look forward to both parties succeeding with it. And, and so that's, that's where some of my requests come from. Okay. 
Well, if you'd like me to address some of those, the so the upfront payment, you know, as far as I don't really even think that one uh, provision, the or payment won't be due upon termination, is, is applicable here, other than the the dollar a month, because we're we're already making that payment. Um, I mean, I'm happy to take it out. Uh, again, a lot of this can be uh, renegotiated after the year after we figure out what's going on. We don't know what kind of, um, you know, I want to say what kind of uh, excitement or what, what's going to happen once we get this up. I mean, it could be that uh, these 81 people all are joyous and they, they all get on board, or maybe two people get on board. And the point is there that there's not, you know, the sort of revenue or sort of profitability. It's just a matter of they have access, which is the whole point of this. Uh, and, and the point of getting this done before December 30th, because that is the mission of CARES Act. So um, I would, you know, it, I would love to say we could come up and say, you know, we'll give 5,000 one time and 500 a month, but that's just not, that doesn't work uh, for us. It just won't, because we don't know. There's a lot of unknowns. Uh, what we've offered, uh, as you'll see the comparables, um, we're typically do a, a 200 to $250 a month lease for like a five-year period. What we're offering here is a one-year lease with a 3,600 uh, upfront payment. And essentially, that will, I think, boil down to about $300 a month. Um, obviously, after a year, if it turns out that the commission decides there's great profit and 81 people signed up at that point, then I see your point. And yes, that might be an option to talk about, well, I think there needs to be more. Well, are you interested in a percentage of gross per month then? No, no, because it's just, and, and I don't think you would either. So you drop down to number five, electrical use. So we end up paying for electricity and, and getting that dollar a month, so we lose money. No, you're not they paying. Don't, they don't pay, they're, they're paid for the electricity. So so lease our cell supply of power. At our cost. At no additional monthly cost. I agree with Commissioner Stefan that item five says that we provide a 20 amp circuit at our cost yeah. for their. That's how I read it. Well, that is not the. Uh, I, I was under the impression, and, and maybe I'm, I'm reading that well, is that we would supply that. So that if that's not what this says, then I will make it more clear. But yes, we, had, we plan to not only pay to get electricity there, but also to cover the electrical costs. That's Yes. So just to get back, so I agree, um, we would like to, to do this. We would like to get up there. Obviously, if the commission says it's not possible, then that's just, I, I guess that's just how it works, and, and yeah. we won't be able to do the that's 81 people. I mean, you, have, you have other options, though. To, we to don't at this that. point. Don't you have the op opportunity to put up your own tower? Not at this point. We only have 30 days, I think, getting a tower up, uh, getting one ordered, getting one over here. Uh, I don't know if there's, I think there's some manufacturing delays. I just think at this point, it'd just be one of those things where we just have to kind of walk. Uh, and so. that, that, that happens. You yeah, know, that, that's it does. A, that's, a, that's, a, that's a fair thing to have happen. Every, it, it does. Lots and of contracts don't get consummated. That's and, correct. And yeah. so really the question then becomes, you know, what, what we're offering here is what we believe is more than fair. What we believe a reasonable community partner and us that are doing something for Reno County. Uh, this is, again, this isn't just about money. This is about getting access to these 81 people that don't have service. And we're doing that with the, uh, with the opportunity to not only provide you comfort on only doing a one-year lease, um, because that's a, a great risk to us, because we could come back and say, like we said, we can negotiate and determine that we can't do it anymore. Well, and, and you know, if this was on my one of my farms, you, you know, mm -hmm. the, the dollar a month just doesn't fly. That just doesn't work. Well, what's interesting, it, it does work with others. And that's what's so profit margins that tight, huh? Well, yeah, we we have no idea what's going to happen. And and in order to provide these people with low cost uh, internet, because I mean, yeah, we could raise the cost. We could work on an agreement where we're 5,000, 6,000, 7,000 up front. But obviously that's, we can't lose money. Otherwise we're gonna go out of business. And we employ 70 people, above 70 people in Reno County. 
And those people rely on us being able to make a profit as well. And so for us to say that we will, um, you know, we can provide you this, this money up front without knowing what's going to happen, it's do just just not doable. Do you have comparables for other businesses using towers? Because all, all the comparables I saw was was just your all's com comparables, and so that's just part of the market. Because you don't. guys, you guys are, are do, you're a great business, an incredible business. I admire you all immeasurably. And part of being a great business is being good negotiators, and, and I'm confident y'all are very good negotiators. Well, if we weren't doing, you know, and, and yes. We had uh, three years to decide this. It might take three years, and we come down to to a great agreement. Problem is, we got less than what? What's today? The first, we have about twenty nine days before we have to yeah. be done with this. So, and 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 one of the things I've always learned through the years, the hard way, is when you make quick decisions fast, you usually make bad decisions. So, right. Well, it's a tough deal. A yeah, tough and deal. so I, I guess the the point here is we've we have come. Like I said last time, and, and I know that was not that was a, a point of contention. Uh, it, it was it was surprising because we we were used to the 200 250 a month, and when you, we brought this up in a one year lease to pay 3600, which is 300. I mean, if if it was coming up another 15 to 25 bucks a month <laughs> for 3900 dollars, you know, I could probably fly it. But coming up 1500 or, or 1400 dollars. Plus a five hundred dollars a month, it just it just doesn't work. So, but when when I negotiate something like this for, for on one of my farms, you know I'm trying to do what's in the best interest of, of myself and my family, and in, in doing it in, in this situation, it, it's in what I'm, what I'm trying to do what's in the best interest of the taxpayer because the mandate I've been given across the board is we need to see our property taxes go down. And 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 uh, man, to, to assume the risk of having somebody on that tower at at, at a dollar a month, I'm not. I think I think you're asking a lot. Okay. Well, I, I like the idea myself that it's only a one year that's revisited within a year, and that would give not only the county an option to look at this. And saying, okay, instead of 81, you have 100. Or instead of 81, you have 30. And it's no longer profitable for you, nor the, nor the county, because it's worth, it's worth less than the effort it took to monitor this. And so from that standpoint, I like the, the option of, of the one year. I, I still am not concerned with uh, uh, the weight because I don't think that'll be a problem, uh, even with those, those antennas, from what I have seen, don't really create a lot of wind resistance. I know there's some opposition to this, uh, but I, I would like to re review, because uh, I didn't get them written down, it went pretty fast on, on uh, some of the word changes and maybe some comments from our uh, a county councilor who, who worked on this contract. It, and, and I appreciate, and we can do that. If I may just address you, Commissioner Stephan, is what you were saying. It, the difference between, obviously, that being a, a private, you know, your farm, if you were looking at that, you want to look at the best interest of you and, and your people, uh, your family. Um, and that's, that's one of those deals where a lot of times if we put something on the, on the farm, those people will try to tie in free internet uh, because that's important to them. Here, what we're talking about is not just coming up with, with money for the taxpayers, and I, I'm not even sure that worked with the water district, but it's more about serving those 81 people that don't have service, and that's it. That, that's his whole point. If we were up there just to, I mean, like I said, if, if we're going around uh, in a normal day and coming up with trying to find 81 people, uh, it'd be very different if we, we knew we had 81 people signed up uh, because we've had that interest. But right now, it's not about trying to um, just make a big windfall or profit on this. It's about trying to get access to those people who may take it or may not. <laughs> we don't know. Uh, they may decide they don't want, uh, but at least they have that option. And that's the point. We're just trying to give them the option. Uh, we have kids that go remote now, um, off and off. We have uh, parents that are working remotely. Um, it's just more important than ever. And so, yes, I understand your, your position as 
if this was a, a three year long lease and we needed to work out something because we were stuck in that, then yes, I think we could go there. But right now it's to the point that we have less than 30 days uh, to get 81 people some uh, internet. If we can do that, great. This is what we're proposing. Um, if not, then I, I understand and we will, I guess, put our resources elsewhere. I, I, I guess that's just what I have to, have to do at this point. That's perfectly fair. Thank you. Uh, okay, I, uh, I, I agree with many of the thoughts that uh, Commissioner Stephan said uh, on the, the, the contract wording, and we, we can go back over there, those if, if uh, Commissioner Hurst would yes. like. I think that's appropriate. I, I guess uh, uh, why I'm willing to uh, not try to get the best deal on the money situation is the fact that uh, if I understand that the state has dis discovered that, that blocks economic development in Kansas is rural internet. And so as, as I understand it, this CARES Act money was given so that we could get people hooked up to the internet and have internet for their jobs or school or et cetera. And so as Commissioner Stefan has said, this hopefully would be a good public private situation. And I'm, I'm willing dollars for something that is good for the community, those, those 80 people or whatever that might, might hook up. Uh, uh, I, I accept almost everything else that uh, Commissioner Stephan has said is probably improvements to the contract, and I think uh, uh, Joe and Mr. Kaplan could make those happen. I, I guess the, the question that I have and, and where we're headed is we got to get two affirmative votes or, or two negative votes. Uh, that is, uh, Commissioner Stephan, where are you on uh, uh, the payment situation? Well, I, I still feel very confident that they can they can do better than that, and I'd I, I, I and, and, and as they as they they plead their case to, to to help these folks in Reno County, you know, I plead my case to help the other people of Reno County at the same time and and share some of the profits and and make this truly a joint venture and and. And you can do that by, I'd heard early on you're talking about a $300 a month payment, and that's that went to a dollar. That's the 30, the, the reason we do the, the upfront payment is because that's CARES yeah. That's yeah. how we can do that. And let so me, that, that boils down to $300 a month. Let me clear one thing up and might help a little bit with regard to this. Uh, this is f the monies that we're talking about here, that $3,600 and $1 a month, uh, that goes to the water district itself and not to the complete taxpayers of Reno yeah. County. This only goes to that. It's just, it's just like a, a, a water system and water payments in a city. They go are self-surviving, yeah. if you will. It, so it only affects those water district uh, people that use this water district. And maybe that's that helps a little bit towards understanding the fact that uh, uh, it only affects the uh, the funding of that water district, which is still funded by taxpayer dollars, correct? Not all county taxpayer dollars, though. Mm -hmm. Just still funded by just, taxpayer money. Correct? No, it's it's funded by users. Yeah. Taxpayers. They are, but it, there's a difference between a taxpayer and a user. Yeah. This is a user fee. So you're saying, but it's you can call it a tax if you want to. Yeah. But it's the cost of of it's it's your cost of providing a water system to your property rather than a well. Okay, so you say it's a break-even <coughs> sector of the government, the water towers and the water use and all the expenses associated with water. That that'd be pretty much right. Yes, that only the people that are in that water district that use that water pay for that water, and they're paying for that in place of a well, and it's just like a septic system. You're paying for that sewer lagoon 
in place of maintaining and building your own uh, septic system. So it's it's a user fee, user tax. You're saying you're, it, you're, it, it equals out because of the the person isn't having to put in a, a septic system. Well, that's that's yes. Hopefully, but that's the way year, it works. Year in and year out, does the do the, does do the water districts consume money or or generate money? They should have be able to generate enough for replacement cost and maintenance cost. Does Randy have any in? Do you know any know that? Okay, Commissioner Stephanie cut out a little bit, but I believe for this water district, <clears throat> it is all user fee, no um, property taxes. The water district is in, um, I believe, and I don't have that in front of me, in decent or good condition for their their cash balance. So anything they collect that's over their bond cost goes into their fund, their water fund, to help, as Commissioner Hurst mentioned, for over yeah. Right. Yeah. We have some water districts around the county that uh, haven't charged enough in order to replace the water lines and the uh, pumps and uh, so forth. So that's where that reserve that Randy was talking about comes in uh, for maintenance and replacement. And I, I think I interrupted. I think they were going to you, Joe, about your, your thoughts on I, that. I got Don talking oh, to me here. Yes, so go. Was, was there a question? I looked up a couple things that, or, that uh, Commissioner Stephan brought up that I need to address. I did not have a copy of the lease in front of me earlier. Uh, let me talk about the assumption of risk and responsibility. I would point out paragraph 13 A and B of the, of the primary document. That may have been what he was talking about. But this requires the uh, idea tech at its cost and expense to maintain throughout the lease public liability and property damage insurance uh, with a, a million dollar uh, liability and two million dollar aggregate uh, uh, insuring against all actual or alleged liability of the idea tech and its agents arising out of or in connection with their use or occupancy of the lease premises mm -hmm. and the county shall be not the county but it's the what the water district shall be named as an additional insured Paragraph B under 13 goes further and, and talks about indemnification to hold uh, the, the water district harmless from any and all claims and, uh, uh, rising out of the idea tech's use or occupancy of the premises or for the conduct of its business or for any activity, work, or things which may be permitted or suffered uh, by it in, a, in or about the leased premises, including all, all damage, costs, attorney's fees, expenses, and liabilities. Um, and the only, the only responsibility the county would have in this regard is its gross negligent conduct, which uh, might have contributed to the problem and, and its limitations are, 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 are counties, uh, the county and the, the water district's uh, liability is limited by the Kansas Tort Claims Act. So I believe uh, that, that that particular paragraph, those two particular paragraphs uh, require uh, uh, idea tech to be responsible for any and all damages which it occurs to the entire lease premises uh, and, uh, and to provide an a insurance to adequately deal with that if, if, the, if the insurance is, meets the limits that, that this board would want. Uh, I also, uh, we were talking about uh, even uh, we were talking about uh, electrical. Uh, we already have electric service to that area, but we have minimal electric uh, electricity demands. I think there's a strobe light on top and down. There might be some other minor thing. But, uh, so the, the source is already there, and they would they would use that. Paragraph, well, I think we have a conflict, Ethan, yeah. that I didn't catch in that uh, paragraph. Uh, uh, five, let me get that here. Paragraph five of the agreement 
not five, but um, paragraph five of the addendum mm. appears to me to conflict with uh, uh, paragraph nine of the, with respect to utilities. Paragraph nine, which is the main uh, document, uh, says that the idea tech shall pay all electricity and utility costs in connection with its use of the lease premises and the tower, and uh, and that we will permit them, uh, their contractors, to install power facilities and conduits or telecommunication broadband lines to the extent that they need that. So that was where we said you're going to, you know, if you have to install stuff, it's on you, mm -hmm. and you're going to pay for the electricity costs. Uh, Unfortunately, I think that Exhibit A may conflict with that, uh, in that, call it Exhibit A, uh, Paragraph 5, to which reference has been made, it talks about electrical use, and it would appear to say that we will provide the power source. Well, we do provide the power source, and it's already there. I mean, you don't have to plug this thing in, but it seems to suggest that it may not be at any additional cost, so I would suggest that Paragraph 5 just be deleted, and we go with the main, and that's acceptable. Um, one other thing I, I, I wanted to mention, and I didn't get one of the, did not get down one of the things that Commissioner Stefan raised, unfortunately, so I, just, I have to go back and listen to her, perhaps we go through that again. But we're talking about uh, notification, two business days and so forth, um, and, and uh, your technician and Don Britton talked about that, this is a situation where, uh, because this is a, we have 24 seven standby uh, personnel with respect to uh, being, a, to be able to respond to this particular site. We already have people that are on call for that particular purpose. Uh, they're not out there a lot, but they are available. If Idea Tech wants access to this site, we're gonna have all the keys. It's not only is keys getting in externally into the tower, but there are, there are uh, keys used to access uh, <coughs> facilities at the top. And so uh, we're not going to distribute keys. We're going to keep the keys. If they need to be there, then they call us out, and, and uh, we will have a person there, and we will be reimbursed for all of our labor and costs in, in connection with that. Uh, and and the, the, the contract provides for that. Well, you know, I think Don, Don Britton and I would rather not have to deal with that particular issue, but on the other hand, it's up to this board to decide the economic development benefits and, and so forth. I mean, as far, far as staff is concerned, we'd rather not just deal with it. It's a lot simpler. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, I think that uh, all of our costs will be covered, and uh, I don't think that the, I think that um, there might be an emergency response. I mean, I'm not advocating. I mean, uh, I'm not advocating for this lease or not. But I can envision that you guys need to have, if your system's down up there, uh, two business days. Uh, two business days could be a, a long time. I mean, uh, for instance, if it happened on Thanksgiving Day, uh, we're, we're talking about five days. But we have the capacity. We have people already available to respond. And, and I think Don says we, we can do that with, uh, within the limitations we have uh, without creating any additional, hiring additional people and so forth. So I, I would point that out to you. Um, those are the issues that I wrote down uh, uh, that Commissioner Stefan had raised. And I, I know that at least there's another one that I, that I didn't, that I. I believe it was the uh, termination upon termination, no payment being due. I didn't get into that. Yeah, no, I mean. Yeah, I think that's. Oh, is, was that it? I, I believe so, Commissioner. Is that? Okay. Well, <coughs> now the termination means you don't even start, right? Or is it termination in the process? In the pr if something happens, if there's a breach of the contract and they they need to well, terminate. You, well, 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 the only payments are at that point are one dollar. Yeah, right. You're, right. I mean, you already paid. The, yes, we will. Thirty-six hundred. So if that's left alone, it, it's almost immaterial. Right. However. If, if, we're, if we have uh, rental sums of, uh, of the type we're talking about, then that's ongoing, and of course then that would be, that would have to be addressed. Correct. I have one question yes. with regarding to the electricity, okay. Uh, without a separate meter there, uh, how are you, how you going to pay for the electricity? Here's what Don and I talked about. 
think the electric draw is very minimal. We, we pretty well know what our monthly bill is out there. I mean, it's, it's very small. We would be able to, uh, we would be able to allocate okay. proportion that among them. And I mean, the, 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 the amount of dollars involved is, 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 yeah. is, I mean, it's important that they, they pay for what they consume, but we think we, we can come up with a fair and equitable uh, allocation of that. And okay. We just say, here's your bill. And okay. Yeah. All right. Don, is that? Yes, I, I know within a couple dollars every month what the bill is, so I think anything that exceeds that will be their bill. Okay. We decided, as a, I mean, we amongst ourselves, we considered that and decided it probably wasn't worth putting in another meter yeah. just, just for what we're talking about. A great deal of power consumption, that's one thing. But right. It, I think we're, it's usually somewhere in 5 to $10 range, at m and that's speaking from... Uh, just in drafting these, knowing that um, I don't know the actual amount, but it's a very minimal. That that answers my question because it costs a lot monthly. Just to I know what we pay over to farm monthly, and and if you can do it for ten, yeah. uh, that cheapens that helps. I might hopefully also, help the customer out. I, I might also comment in, in connection with perhaps what the, even was talking about before. As we went through discussions with this lease, the original proposal was that it would automatically renew, and and uh, and that's not something we wanted to do. We recognized that uh, uh, given the CARES Act money, that this needed to get up, and and at this point, it's really an experiment, both for Idea Tech and for the county. Uh, they're not sure that this is going to work out for them practically and and, uh, and viably. We're not sure that it's going to work out for us. But we figured one year with an opportunity to see how it works, and if at the end of that year we walk away from it, either one of us were, we uh, uh, are in a position to do so, and, and uh, that's the uh, that's the spirit and intent in which this would be, if it's approved, would be uh, that we would go forward. Any other questions, comments? I guess I'd like to ask Don Britton a question because maybe he can relieve my concern about professional engineer signing off on this. Don, do you have any problems with affixing their equipment to these railings on a engineering basis? No, I don't have a problem. Okay, thank you. I think that's meaningful to me because you know a lot more about uh, this type of stuff than I would. Uh, I guess, uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make the motion that we approve the contract that is presented to us today, the exception of deletion of item paragraph 5 on Exhibit A. Uh, that's motion. Uh, would that, would that, is there a second? Well, I'll second it for more discussion. Uh, does your motion include the uh, portion of that our county councilor would review with the uh, all the items as stated, as questioned? He made some other comments, didn't he, I believe, regarding that. With final review by councilor? Yeah, my motion would include that uh, we have our county counselor and idea tech uh, have one more draft of this that's agreeable to uh, our county counselor and proceed to allow them to get this done by the end of the year all right <coughs> any further discussion well i will say for the record before the vote again you know it gets back to, to, to risk versus reward and and uh I think financially this is too skinny, and and I I I'm, 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 I can't support it because of the financial terms. It's 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 too much time, effort, risk for the money allocated on your all's part. Okay. My, my uh, comment, and not not to again say what I really said before is that that. The state wants people to be able to 
have internet connections for what they call economic development of the state and i think that's more important that that potentially gets more people hooked up than the dollar value of the contract so that that's why i'm willing to stay where we're at with the time and and i understand a win-win for idea tech and for the people of reno county i probably would agree with him on the amount but since it's a win-win for the county and idea tech i'm willing to uh let the rate for one year be and 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 i i disagree with your assessment commissioner sellers i i think it is our responsibility to negotiate for the taxpayers as best possible and i feel like i'm doing that and i feel like you're acquiescing to to a, a financially uh, one-sided deal and so you know with that let's vote okay and and my reason for for uh, this is because of the one-year contract and the option for both of us to review this and decide whether it's worth it or not so let's uh ask for the roll call Yes. Mr. Stephan? No. Mr. Sellers? Yes. All right. It's been passed two to one. And so uh, we'll go on. Okay. And uh, hopefully that uh, this will work out for everyone concerned. Let's hope so. Thank you very much. <laughs> Appreciate it. Okay. Now, I don't know whether Joe's available here pretty soon, but we need to uh, discuss the District 9, the fire truck contract with Hayes Fire. Uh, we have a copy of that in front of us, and uh, we'll get uh, the County Councilor back in here. To uh, bring us up to date with this because I think there was a few items regarding uh, delivery and uh, time involved with this I know I've talked with the assistant fire chief at uh, District 9 uh, with his concerns on uh, on timeliness and so we don't they don't have to pay for more uh, in case there's some increases in prices later on Is Joe available? Shauna? Is Joe available for the fire truck discussion? I ask him because he's 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 wrote the contract and and uh Joe, would you like to make comment about this uh, fire contract with District 9? Yes, thank you. Uh, you will recall, at, at least uh, Commissioners Hurst and uh, Sellers, that uh, back in October, uh, Chief Curley uh, Gingrich and his uh, assistant chief from Fire District 9 at Haven uh, approached you about purchasing two new uh, Prairie Ranger Firebrush uh, trucks from Hayes Fire and Rescue Sales and Service uh, in Hayes, Kansas, um, and that was approved. Uh, the, the, uh, the board authorized mm -hmm. uh, the purchase of two such uh, trucks, um, each for fifty-one thousand eight hundred and fifty-three dollars and sixty cents. Uh, option number one. Uh, was to purchase a second truck uh, for the same for the same price. So uh, since then, with everything else that's going on, then we asked uh, a Hayes uh, Fire and Rescue Sales and Service to send us a contract, and uh, I didn't get to it for a while, so I apologize. But uh, ultimately, uh, there was an addendum that. Uh, that I asked for, which clarified a number of, of uh, issues. Uh, 
uh, this particular uh, Hayes uh, fire uh, will get a, uh, we qualify, the fire district qualifies for a fleet discount from Ford with respect to these uh, F-450s, uh, and they will acquire two of the chassis from, from Ford. Uh, once the um, chassis are obtained, we will pay them $35,776.20 each for the chassis. They will, in the meantime, when they get this contract, start constructing the platform, which they will place on those fire trucks and they will equip them, uh, their specifications are attached to, to uh, be fully operational brush trucks. Uh, they believe they can do that within 120 days, but because uh, uh, we sometimes, we haven't had trouble with Hayes uh, Fire and Rescue Service, but we have at times ordered vehicles and they don't produce them within a time period and we're hanging there for a long period of time. We've got one of those right now, so we put in a clause that uh, if they don't complete and deliver uh, these trucks within 180 days after they receive the chassis, then we have the option to terminate the agreement and to get our and to get our money back. So uh, this is the formal agreement. Uh, the there was a uh, you might notice that there's something called a second addendum. Uh, that's a little bit confusing. There was a first addendum which wasn't complete. And when I negotiated further with them, they produced a document called a second addendum, which actually incorporated the first. So there's only going to be one addendum, and I asked him to send me another one today, which just says fire apparatus contract, delete the word second, and so we don't yeah. think we got two addendums. We only we only have one. So uh, usually we would at this stage we would have the county administrator delegate the authority to to sign these contracts, but he's out of commission right now uh, and uh, isolated at home. And so I brought this forward because we would need the the uh, uh, chairman of the Board of County Commissioners to sign, and uh, I would ask for a, a motion to approve the fire apparatus contract and addendum for the purchase of these two trucks and to authorize the chairman to sign. Thank you for explanation. Okay. More than you wanted? Usually. <laughs> All right, you've heard the explanation of this, and we've basically a approved the uh, purchase of this uh, previously. Uh, so is there a motion to accept the contract between Fire District 9 and the Hayes Fire and Rescue Sales and Service? as presented in this contract? I would move that we accept the contract as presented and authorize the chairman to sign the contract. Is there a second? Is there a second? Second. Been moved and seconded. Uh, so is there any further discussion? Seeing none, hearing none, uh, roll call, please. Commissioner Hurst? Yes. Mr. Stephan? Yes. Commissioner Sellers? Yes. Okay. Moving on to uh, County Administrator's Report. Randy? Okay, thank you. <clears throat> um, I wanted to let you know that in the past couple weeks, I've emailed Commissioner, I'd let you know about Western Acres Mobile Home Park that they were going to be the water system was going to be shut down yesterday. Or um, received an email from KDHE that the judge in Topeka had put a stay, or, stay order on that, allowing the mobile home park to continue. They have since hired a, a water certified that can run that system. So just give me an update that that mobile home parks water system is able to continue to operate at this time. <clears throat> the other thing, I know I sent an email, but the sales tax for November, which was generated in September, was higher than in previous years. Leslie created a spreadsheet for me. I did a, get a chance to send that out, but 
were 102.31% year-to-date above last year. Health techs are still doing really good. I just wanted to bring that up to you, and I will email that out to the commission later today. It gives about a six, seven-year snapshot of month-to-month sales tax collection. That's all I have. Okay. Thank you, Randy. County Counselor, do you have any to report? No, sir. Okay. Commissioner Sellers? I think everything that I have has been covered. All right. Commissioner Stephan? I believe you brought up something you wanted to bring up. Yeah, I think it's important that we talk about what's going on in regards to the distribution of the vaccine. And I know from an email I got the other day that there's an extensive Kansas document outlining the rollout. I bet Karen can go into some depth on that. I do know that today the CDC is having an emergency meeting with their advisory panel discussing the prioritization of the distribution. And so there will be some tweaking of this. But ultimately the CDC doesn't have any say over this, from what I understand. Do you agree? So the CDC puts out the plan, and then KDHE maps out their plan as well, so it follows the guidelines. KDHE's is already pretty well planned out, but it says it's a living document. So anyway, I'd love to hear what you have to say. Excuse me a minute. Karen, could you introduce yourself again? Karen Hammersmith, Interim Health Officer, yes. And so we're working to get the immunization vaccine plan going. It will be similar to what it was in 2009 when we had the H1N1, and we followed those protocols. And this goes to a little bit different clientele because obviously we know the people that have comorbidities and are older are much more needed. So it will go to health care workers and then those individuals. And then there's a whole tier setting. And that depends on how quickly it rolls out because we know that it's going to trickle in. We're never going to get large amounts. So as it trickles in, we'll get the health care providers that are taking care of it because you can't take care of somebody if you can't take care of yourself first. I think it would be very reasonable. I think we're all in agreement that it will come in slowly at first. And so I think it would be perfectly fine to discuss it from that standpoint. So once that gets in, then you go to the second tier when you get in large amounts. So first tier is health care providers, particularly those with direct contact. Yeah. And then it will move into other areas that they have specifically laid out. And it just kind of depends on what's going on at that time, which I don't think it will necessarily change. But they look at the vaccine supply, obviously, disease epidemiology, and then local community factors. So they're looking, you know, here we have several long-term care facilities. So that's why it would go to them as well first. It goes to people with comorbidities that are older. It will go to different things that are trending. So right now it would go to, like, teachers. They had in there, we looked at the schedule. Who's they? Which say they had it in there? KDHE sent it on some slides yesterday. Yeah. So it goes to the areas that are trending. So if you have an outbreak going on, then it would go to that area to protect those that are in that outbreak at that time. People at high risk in those areas or anybody? So you're going to always go to the high risk people. And then you're going to go to outbreak. So it, it, it has that and it has inclusion of diversity as well in the whole document. And so I can get more information as that's coming out. And it's a living document. Um, I did have the website where the Kansas document is in KDHE. And that's on that update that I sent to you guys. Okay. So 
again, it, it, what, do you feel like you have any control of it at, at ground zero here in Reno County? Um, any, any variability? In we it? will follow what KDHE says, but it's it's also the most likely people that we would also direct that to when you start with the healthcare workers and then um, emergency responders and those groups that are having those outbreaks and, okay. and the people with okay. the high risk. So it'll be healthcare workers with direct contact with COVID positive patients. And then you then you kind of fall into your high risk group of people in general, being anybody, the older, over say mm -hmm. over 65, mm -hmm. is that the Generally. age? Mm -hmm. With, with, with comorbidities. comorbidities. Mm -hmm. And 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 then you then you might come in to really hit the after that you'd hit the essential workers in general as 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 more and more came out and that would be like policemen firefighters. Um, so they're all in those tiers and it and it's yeah. going to yeah go to those groups. That's okay. what it's kind of all laid out okay. that way. Okay. I think it's very very important that people hear that from mm -hmm. us first, and I, that's why I, I brought it up. And it does sound like a lot of it's fleshed out. There's a little bit of movement on it. And one of the other things I wanted to, 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 to for us commissioners to consider today, you know, is we are, very, I've, I've clearly stated over and over, we're very concerned about the school systems and, 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 and having them back in business, you know, in, in, in agreement with the, the CDC director the other day who, who said schools need to be open. You know, I would like that we even entertain the idea of just some sort of recommendation that, that, that school employees, you know, both private or public and private, that their uh, high risk employees be considered at the very top, but just below the healthcare workers in this thing, if at all possible. So yesterday in that living document, it was, I mean, the, the teachers were in that tier as and soon as we all, have that I think we ought there. to broaden that to, to, to all of the, of, the, of, the, of the school employees, because you got the janitorial staff, you got lots of other people who are still very much in the mix who could have, have, have be at high risk. I, so I'm just, that's splitting hairs, but you know what I mean, right? Yeah, yeah, and we will be following the guidelines set forth by KDHE, but I do believe um, because we have quite a few outbreaks in the schools, and so that's when they go back to the um, um, what's going on in the disease epidemiology. I think that that's why that group will be included as well. I would encourage you, and I don't know I that. Interrupt your comment for a minute. Go ahead. Go uh, ahead. You know, I think I think uh, Commissioner Stephan uh, uh, makes a very good point here, uh, and and I understand Karen's got to follow the guidelines from the state, but I, I certainly hope that we get communications back to the state. That I, I do agree with Commissioner Stephan in that, that that after our medical cultures are a very very high priority. Uh, the little bit I understand about keeping schools in session, it's not as much about having the, the the children be positive as it is having the teachers be positive. And and as this thing has progressed, I think we're all in agreement. We want our schools open. So I, I totally concur with uh, Commissioner Stephan on this point that that the educational system in its entirety should be uh, very pyramid. One point that I saw this morning was that KDHE isn't recognizing the CDC's uh, idea or brought what they brought forth with regards to the 14 day versus the 10 day. I would certainly like to see your input at some point in time as you study this more as, as to why uh, the KDHE, besides their reasoning they gave, is, is so enthralled with 14 day versus 10 day. And, and so you know, eventually, I'd, I'd like to see that looked at. Yeah, I, I think 14 days, 
uh, is, especially in the school system, is completely wrong. And, and I certainly would like to, to see that looked at very seriously yeah. from our county yeah. standpoint. Particularly coupled with the fact that we know this PCR test, this COVID test, the five day one or whatever day, not the immediate one, has a very high false positive rate. So yeah. we really are sidelining a, a lot of essential workers uh, needlessly. And, and so I agree. And, and so I think, boy, we'd love for you to give a little pushback up the ladder in regards to that. So KDHE has come up with um, some uh, speaking to of, of lowering that uh, rate from the 10 day from the 14 days, um, but it is not set yet. Um, when they adopt that, we would obviously move to that. So there is some talk at the state level about changing those guidelines. Um, I would redirect what we have going on in our hospital is extremely um, problematic. They had uh, 48 um, COVID positive patients. That was their peak over the weekend. They have um, 38, I believe, Chuck reported this morning in the hospital that are COVID positive, and they have eight people on ventilator, ventilators today. So um, we are truly trending up um, with our cases, and that is extremely concerning. Uh, that, uh, that's not borne out when you look at the KDHE website. You know, and, and, and may you're, I think you're speaking in the county, uh, I, and I'm looking more at the state, and I really do think for the most part that's, that's more representative. You know, again, you know, the KDHV website was updated yesterday, and 39% of staffed ICU beds are, are available. So, yeah, you know, they're, they're, it's tough times, but at the same token, we just got, we've got to handle it. And, and, and again, the cases are clearly, the death rate's clearly plummeting, and, and the, the, uh, the cases are clearly plateauing as well. Like, you know, I've studied the KDHE website. But uh, anyway, I'd rather stay focused on, on the vaccination acts aspect yeah. of it than argue over that. So Yeah, I'm more concerned with our county right now than I yeah. am the well, state. Well, you, you, to, to try to split out one is, is, is great but you don't have the numbers to really develop trends that really give you data you can go to the bank on. Yeah, it's, a, it's, a false, it's a false narrative when you look at that small of an area, but I appreciate what you're saying. And, and especially in, in the school system. Especially I think the, in the school the, ten, the, the five to 10 day is, is to me more realistic than a 14 day, so you're cutting kids out of class yeah. longer. But anyway, that's that's just my comment. So appreciate you, mm -hmm. Karen. And, yeah. Uh, Thanks for the update. Mm -hmm. And uh, and please do keep. You know, I, I think that's a great narrative to to be pushing out is exactly what's going on with the vaccination distribution, and uh, I think people will be very very interested in that. Mm -hmm. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Carla, how's your first, second day? Wonderful. Thank you very <laughs> okay. much. Thank you. Uh, I don't have any uh, particular comments to make, so if there's none other. Well, would you all be interested in, 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 in making a, a, a resolution or recommendation that, that we are concerned about the, the, the high-risk school employees, teachers, and that we w would like to see them highly prioritized in the in the vaccine distribution process I, I I'd like to do that as a I know it's not going to carry a ton of weight but I think it's 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 a it's a nice statement that they could even use to push back up the chain of command to, to get so we're local our local entity is providing some feedback at the state level so I think we've got a kind of one direction stream of information going on for the most part so I, I would personally really like to do that if, okay. if, if you all are interested in doing that. Commissioner Sellers, comments? Um, I, 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 I agree. Uh, I'm not sure how much uh, input we will have, but I don't think it hurts to do what is being suggested. Uh, I would suggest that uh, we create a letter to the uh, to the state indicating uh, our discussion today of the educational system as this comes down in the further days. Uh, 
that would be something that if you two agreed to it, I would sign and we'll get sent to the state as soon as possible. Sounds like a good solution to me. Karen, your thoughts on that or, or Carla with regards to uh, just trying to help? Um, I have great concerns about schools being in session, especially in the older um, schools, seven through um, 12. It's not that we don't know that, that it's a um, uh, poor education when they're not in session, but we have a 47.3% positive test rate. So that is very concerning to get um, those kids in there because those, those teachers are the ones that um, are going to be suffering. Obviously, we need to um, get the immunization out there to, to everyone as soon as possible. So I think that's also very beneficial. Um, so, I mean, I agree that we can do whatever we can, but you know, we have a lot of people to get that to. So you think it's a good idea too? I think the, the letter that uh, Commissioner Stepan is suggesting that I concur with, I think it doesn't hurt anything and it might help uh, reinforce what the three of us uh, agreed to. So we have a consensus to do this. So that would take care of that. That'd okay. Be great. Thank you. Commissioner Sellers can work on that along with uh, other help. <laughs> that's what you get huh <laughs> anyway uh if there's no further business to come before discussion to the, to the commission today we will adjourn